what is great marketing? What does it take to 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 reveal the the pain and the joy of a thing? Okay. <laughs> it all starts at the beginning. And let me give you, I'm going to give you a couple of different ways of looking at it, okay? And it, again, we're going to, might go a little long here. So um, just stay tuned in. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing start is- Start at the beginning. Let's like, start at the beginning. In the early part of my career, you know, like General Magic and Philips and what have you, I, and especially when I was, you know, a teenager, when I was like doing, making my own chips and stuff like that. I really worried about just putting cool things together. I'm like that, when I put those two cool things together as an engineer, you go, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then I would talk to the other friends who might be geeks too, and they go, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Because we knew the bits, so we put them together and that's a new way of doing it. And you're like, wow, that's all what? It's not why. Why are you doing this? We know what we're doing, but we don't know why we're doing it because we're not articulating it for ourselves because it's just something we're like putting it together and like, yeah, that's cool because, because we think we're solving some problem we have, but we're not really articulating it. So what normally happens, and this happens because we invest in so many companies around the world, you have these brilliant engineers, designers, scientists, researchers, they put together these, these what's. And then they develop it, develop it, develop it. And then at the end, they call in marketing and say, now tell a story about this and let's get it out to the world, okay? What happens then is marketing's like, well, why do, why do people need this? Tell us why people need it. And so they create a story around this product. But the product was born out of what's, not why's. And so they start telling, marketing starts telling a story and it turns out to be a fictional story usually. They say, oh, this is going to do these things. The product comes and is delivered and it falls flat on its face because the marketing doesn't match the product because they weren't both created at the beginning together, right? There are what's when you create a product, but there's a lot more whys and the whys help inform the what's and the whys also inform the marketing. So at the, at the that's what you mean deeply at we should start at the beginning. So it, the designer should be also the marketer. The engineer should be the marketer. Exactly. Stop impressing the geek next to you. What is the superpower you're bringing or the pain you're killing for the, your, your, the end customer, right? Now, let's, give, let's contrast that. Think about a movie. A movie starts with a treatment. It has an audience. This has the audience. Here's the characters. Here's the storyline, the plot. Here's the, here's, the, here's the arc of the story, right? It pulls that all out. Then there's a script that's written. And that script is then produced. And then you add all the flourishes and what have you, music and graphics and what have you, right? And then it comes out. And then there's the marketing of the movie. And that story was created at the beginning. What you need to do if you're going to do a great product is create that treatment for your product. And I call that the press release. Do the press release like the treatment. Who's the audience? What what features do you have? What pains are you solving for people? Have the virus of doubt there to remind them what pains they have and why you're solving them. The price, all of those things. And you use that as the bar, the measuring stick for what you do during development. Because what happens that along the route, you know this, oh, we're not gonna be able to get that feature done on time. Throw that one overboard. We gotta hit the, we have to hit the date. Oh, we're not sure this product's right yet. Add another feature. Add another fe feature creep, yeah. right? If you don't have that story you know you're going to tell at the beginning, you don't have that bar, right? And then at the end, you don't know when you're done if you don't have that story. So you can actually look at that p press release. You, you, might mod you, know, you, you change it over time, um, that draft. But then when you're done, you know the what's and the why's. You have all the things at the audience and everything. And then you can give that to marketing and say, well, and marketing has been along the way, be, let's be clear. But then everybody's in sync. And that's when you can tell a cohesive non-fictional story about, and the product delivers on that story or hopefully over delivers on that story. So in the drafting from the beginning to the end of the press release, what does a successful team look like? Who's part of the draft? Is it engineers, designers? What, what, what's the purpose of a marketing department in a company, small, let's say small company, but more than 
two people. Okay. So uh, from where does the why come from? Should it always come from the designer or should there be a marketing person that, yeah, okay. steps in and asks the question? Okay. So I'll just keep asking random questions. I <laughs> know <laughs> these are great questions. Okay. <laughs> so, it's like, cause you're just like, I'm like, I can't wait to tell you the answer. Uh, yeah. um, so it's in the book as well. Yeah. But you have to separate out the various functions of marketing. When that's what I thought, I was like, marketing's marketing, you know, when I was, and, and it's really not. There's so many disciplines, just like in engineering, mechanical, electrical, software, and even software, it's, you know, are you cloud services, firmware, applications. Marketing has that much diversity as well, okay? And you have to honor that. And so there is marketing communications like PR, press press there is um social marketing there is a marketing creative right there's marketing activation um but there's another thing that also comes out and people uh confuse it with marketing which is called product marketing or product management mm -hmm. and product management or product marketing is the voice of the customer they're the person who sits there and listens to what's going on in the competition in the marketplace, understanding the needs and those pains of the customer, and they're representing them in every single meeting so things don't get off track, right? So that, um, and they're creating the messages, not the marketing. What happens is there's messages that product marketing creates. Like those are the deep messages. Like we need to save 20% of energy, let's say, right? And then marketing turns that into something that's with creative and everything mm -hmm. and brings that message across. Maybe it doesn't say that, but it comes maybe visually or some other way. So product management does that and, 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 and holds that press release along the route and making sure that we're tracking. And then also marketing is tracking with that press release to make sure they're not telling a, a fictional story, right? Because yes. they can also add extra adjectives or something. And then the product can't deliver that. It's like, no, 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 no keeps everybody has in to be chat. grounded to the press release to the raw sort of right ideas. to the customer needs yeah right because they're always representing the customer so you have to have a product manager typically that's the founder right mm -hmm. in the beginning and then over time you hire a product management team to then really you know watch over this the whole way and they are talking to customer support they're talking to engineering they're talking to design they're talking to sales and marketing and they are always in the mix and it's the hardest thing to hire for Ooh, yeah so it's they have this very important job of developing and maintaining the why exactly why is it the hardest to hire for because you have to understand you first nobody reports to you you're alone you, so you're alone and you have to build great ties with all of these different these different functions. Yes. You have to understand what they do, have be empathetic with what they do, and you have to get have to project em the customer's empathy or empathy for the customer to them and tell them why and why this customer needs this, why this doesn't work, and so that they learn more. They're not just doing, but they learn about the customer's point of view and sit in there in, and stand in their shoes to be able to then make better decisions on the engineering details or the operational details, customer support details. So they understand the if they're not the customer that it's intended for, they start to live through and through their eyes and see through their eyes of that customer. So they make better decisions. And there's probably fascinating, beautiful tensions between that and sort of the, the the engineers oh that's cool sort of the you know developing the what uh, exactly the, and which makes it an extra hard job i'm sure exactly